So in order for the math trade to work, of course, you have to submit your want lists. You can start building your want lists pretty much any time as soon as uh, your geek list first appears on the online want list generator website. But you won't be able to submit lists until the um, submission deadline has passed. So every math trade, and again, and we'll use this that board gaming thing, math trade list as an example. Every math trade in the header with all the information about the details of that particular trade will have a bunch of dates, including the deadline to add items. Once that deadline has passed, then the organizer of that math trade will um, turn submissions off so that the add items link will disappear. You won't be able to add any more items. The list will be locked. You may or may not be able to still comment on individual items. That's sort of up to the organizer. But at some point, once that initial deadline has passed, the list will be locked and then there will be a final synchronization between the board game geek geek list and the online want list generator uh, version of that site, of that uh, of that list. Again, you can start building your want lists at any time, uh, but you can only submit lists after it's been locked and the organizer has turned the submission feature on. So here now we're looking at the online want list generator website. After you get your login ID and uh, navigate to the uh, sort of the new home page for people who are, have access to the online want list generator, you'll see this page. It will list all of your current active trades and then below that a bunch of other trades that are currently active and then below that it'll show you all your previously um, previous math trades. So here we're interested in this math trade, the, the board gaming thing 2011 math trade, and it has this icon, the double greater than symbol, which means that the want list submission is now open. So there are a bunch of icons down here, and we'll go through at least one of those here in a minute, but the, the first thing to click on is just click on the name of the um, geek list or the name of the math trade. And when you click on that, it takes you to a view that shows all of the items in that geek list. However, it only shows you everything from the point that you left off the last time you were here. So I've been looking at this, so there are 259 items in the list, and it's only showing me the last one because I've seen them all. So you can change the view and go up to the top here and just do what it says. It says you are only viewing new items added since you last viewed this page. If you would like to edit, view the entire list, click here. So I'll click here and then we will see the entire list. And adding items that you want is pretty simple. You just scroll down. Everything is color coded. You can look at the key at the top. Uh, but stuff that you want is some shade of green. Light green is want to buy. Dark green is want and trade. Yellow is sort of wish list and stuff that you want to play or that kind of thing. Blue means you either own it or you've previously owned it or you've already pre-ordered it so you can pretty much ignore the the blue stuff. Um, if it's not coded that just and all that information comes from the uh, entries that you've made on the Board Game Geek website for those particular games. So you can scroll down and just look for something that you might be interested in. This uh, description list has uh, the details that were in the board game geek geek list, as long as that was formatted correctly. So, for example, if you gave, if the poster gave something an alternate name, that alternate name shows up here, and then the details, all the sweeteners, and all that show up in the text of this item. You can always go to the geek list item itself to look at it if you want to directly by clicking on the uh, that double greater than sign here. All right. So I'll just scroll down and show you something that I have not posted myself. All right, so let's just say that I want Pirateer. There's a button that shows up that says Add, which means that you can add it to your want list. When you click it, you see a list of all the games that you have offered in the trade. And if you like, you can check off 
everything that you would be willing to trade for this particular game. So, for example, suppose I would be willing to trade adversity and pay $15 in cash for alibi, etc. You can, you can check as many of these checkboxes as you like. At the bottom of this long list, I've submitted a lot of games to this list. At the very bottom, there's some extra options where you can check all if you'd be willing to trade anything and everything that you have, you know, any one thing for this item, or uncheck all. And then the very useful feature here is the optional value. And basically this is sort of a ranking tool so that if, for example, you're willing to accept several different things for the single game that you've ch chosen, um, if you give them all different values, higher values meaning that you value that game more, uh, the online wallet generator software will preferentially try to get you those trades. So it'll be, you know, you'll, you'll list what you want, but it'll try to satisfy your, your request to get what you want the most first. If not that, it'll go to the next most um, valuable thing to you, etc. So you can just make the value a simple ranking system. So if you've looked at the list and you want 20 games, you can rank them from um, you know, 20 for the one you want the most down to one for the one you want the least. If you are just building your list as you go and you don't really know how many you want yet, um, one simple thing you can do is just use a dollar value as your optional value. So you know, think about how much you would be willing to pay for this item that you want, put that in the optional value um, and then once you're done, you hit save. All right, so you can go through the entire list uh, doing those sorts of um, um, things, checking off things that you want, clicking the add button to add games that you want, checking off the checkboxes for the games of yours that you're willing to trade for that item. And eventually you'll have gone through the entire list. You can also reorganize this list if you prefer. It's, it's by default sorted by the... Uh, geek list number, the number, the order that was added to that geek list, but you can also sort by um, the column headers, for example, you can sort by game name and it'll sort the entire list so that you can look at all the games in alphabetical order if you like, or um, by the rating or the Bayesian rating or the user or the rank. You can sort it multiple ways, however you like to work your way down to the, through the list and decide what it is you're looking for and what you want to trade. But eventually, it, once you've made your way through the list, you can click this button, which is step four in the, in the process here. Click step four to edit your wants. And that will give you a table with all of the games that you have offered across, listed across the top. And in my case, I've offered a lot of games, so I have a whole lot of columns here. But there's a different column for every game that you've offered. And then in that first column are all the games that you are looking to um, try to get in the math trade. And then in this box here, it'll show the optional value that you have assigned to that game. So in this case, for example, I've said this is worth $65 to me, this is $35 to me, or I rank this number 65, I can rank other things 64, etc. However you want to do it, just assign all the numbers that you like. And then for every game that you're willing to accept or to trade for that game in the left side, you click the checkbox. There's a lot of checkboxes, and if you use Firefox, a handy tool is an extension called Grease Monkey. Grease Monkey um, has a few different add-ins and one of them is some kind of checkbox thing that allows you to for example do this and check off a whole bunch of games at once by clicking and holding okay and it just basically toggles uh, everything so for example I can also reverse that process and it just toggles everything. All right, so you go through this big grid, checking off all the trades that you would accept. Do that for every game. And once you're done with that, you want to hit Confirm Changes so that the online wallet generator knows that you have 
made changes and it will save them. And then after you have confirmed your changes, you have to hit this button up here which says submit your lists. You have to hit the submission button. Now you can uh, change your mind later on. Once it's submitted, you can't take your submission back, but you can edit the entire table, rechange everything if you like, make everything blank if you like, just redo it as, as, as much as you like, and then submit a new list. And it is always the latest list submission of yours that is used when the map closes and the organizer runs the, runs the software. Okay, so once you are done, you hit that green box at the top which says submit your lists here. This gives you one last chance to review everything. This is a different format now. And now it will list all the games that you have posted for trade. Under each item, you'll see a list of the games that you want to accept in trade for the games that you're offering. And that list is in the order of your preference according to those values that you had specified earlier. You're still just looking at the list for final review. You've not actually submitted the list. In order to do that, in order to submit your want list to OLWLG, just scroll up to the top of the window and you'll see the Submit My Wants button. Click the button and voila, that's it. You've submitted your want list. You'll get a summary uh, of your submission um, which will be sent to you by Geek Mail on BoardGameGeek. And again, you can re-edit, resubmit your lists up until the next deadline, which is the end of the submission time. And then after that, the um, person organizing the trade will run the software and then publish the results. That's it.